Question 7 tells us that we have a graph of f of x equals to minus 1 over x minus 3 plus 2. So we should know that that is a hyperbola. And so question 7.1 says determine the y-intercept. So that's quite easy. To find a y-intercept, we will make x equal to 0. And so that's going to give us something like that. And then that would eventually give a third plus 2. And that's going to give us 2.33. Question 7.2, write down the equations of the asymptotes. So you guys know on a hyperbola, we typically have two asymptotes, something like that and something like that. Now to find those asymptotes, you look at the equation and specifically you look here and you look here. So let me just do that a little bit better. So this one moves the graph up and down. So plus two would move the graph up by two units. And then x minus three would move the graph three places to the right. And so we would expect that our asymptotes would be at y equals to two and at x equals to three. And so those will be the equations, y equals to two, x equals to three. And with the y-intercept, sorry, of 7.1, we should say zero and then 2.33 because it's always the x and then the y. And then 7.3 for which x value is f of x equal to zero. So they're pretty much saying find the x intercepts because they're making y equal to zero. So we can say zero equals to minus one over x minus three plus two. I would take this to the left because it's negative. So it becomes one over x minus three equals to two. Now we need a common denominator. So we're going to multiply this part up to the top over there, and that'll give us 1 equals to 2 brackets x minus 3, and then 1 equals to 2x minus 6. And then if you bring the minus 6 over, you're going to get 7 equals to 2x, and then x is equal to 7 over 2, which is the same as 3.5. Now in question 7.4, draw a neat sketch graph. Okay, so we've already put the asymptotes, x equals to 3, y equals to 2. We had a y-intercept earlier, which was 2.33, which is a little bit above 2, so that's probably there. And so we must fill the coordinates in, so that'll be 0 and 2.33. And then the x-intercept is 3.5, which is probably around there, and so that'll be 3.5 and 0. Now it's very easy to draw the graph because we know that these are the asymptotes and the graph must always go very close to the asymptotes. So it does something like that and then something like that. 7.5, write down one equation for the line of symmetry. Now, because some of you watching this are going to choose one option and some of you are going to choose another option, I have no choice but to show you both. So remember that the equations of symmetry are the lines that go through the intersection of the asymptotes. So they go something like this. That's the one. Let's talk about that one first. So that one is a straight line. And so we know that a straight line is mx plus c. Now that one has a positive gradient. And did you know that its gradient will always be positive 1? So we can literally say y equals to x plus c for that one. Let's call this number one. And then to find c, it's very easy. What you do is you just need a point. Now the point that those symmetry lines go through, you can use the intersection of the asymptotes because we know that the x value there is three and the y value is two. And so that is the point that we would use. So we can plug in two equals to three plus c. c would be equal to negative one. Therefore, y is equal to x minus 1. So that's one of the symmetry lines. Now the other one goes the other way. And let's call this number 2. And let's actually do it in a different color. So for number 2, it also is a, it's also a straight line. So you say y equals to mx plus c. But this one has a gradient of minus 1. Guys, you must remember that. For a hyperbola, the symmetry lines always have a gradient of 1 and minus 1. Always, 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 always. You can remember that. And then to find C, you just plug in that same point because both of them go through it. Can you see that? It also goes through here. So you can say that 2 equals to minus 1 times 3 plus C. And so if you had to solve for C, you would get 5. And so therefore, the final one or answer for that one would be Y equals to negative X plus 5. Okay, so those are the two symmetry lines that we could use.